Hello, welcome to this video. So I'm going to show you quickly how to set up GIMP 2.10 to look more like Photoshop or more like the tutorials that I teach. So straight away, this is the first screen that you will see when you open up GIMP. What I like to do is I go to edit and preferences. So that'll bring up a dialog box which allows us to adjust things. So the main one we're interested in, on the, long, the left side, you'll see interfaces here. And that actually allows a few options like theme. So firstly, make sure it's on the dark theme because I just prefer it to look like that. And the icon theme, it might be set on symbolic. I like it as a color. So if you click on color, you'll see the icons become colored. That looks more like my um, setup. And also you can do custom icon size. And I like to pick medium because the size kind of looks nice on my monitor if you have a laptop and the screen smaller you can make this icons larger or smaller up to you toolbox is the main one along these options you'll see a few things here so right now in these toolboxes they actually groups you have to click and then you get extra options which i don't really like i want it to be visible straight away so if you uncheck this one two three four fifth box it says use tool groups You'll see on the left hand side now they've seen more options there so that's the only few changes i want you to make do okay and next we want this side menu to look more nice so right now you'll have some options on here for extra tabs you'll see these little tabs here you select on and they give you more options if you click on this little box here it allows you to close tabs so the tab i'm on now is a, a brush tab i close that tab the next tab is a color swatch tab i can close that tab and I have two tabs there called tool options and the undo history. I like to keep those because you can actually see a picture representation of where you were if you want to change that back. But I don't like them to be there. So on the right hand side, which you cannot see, which means I need to show you the right hand side. Now, let me show you the display capture of the right hand side, which is just there. So now you should be able to see that in shot. That is a panel which has patterns in a similar way. You can click on this little box here. You can do close tab. I like to keep the color tab there. Document history. Um, okay, that gives you an idea of the last few files you opened. And brushes, I just like that to be there. Um, if I ever do anything, it just looks nice there. However, the one I keep it on default is the color one. And on the bottom of that is layers and channels and paths. So again, by using this, you can do close tab or add tab. Just pick the tab from the list and right now this tools option is a really good tab to have i like it to be so if you notice i grabbed it by selecting it i just grabbed it and you can see i can just pull it away if i grab tool options and then bring it over here you'll see that blue kind of change so i want to lock it on the left hand menu there so now left hand is tool options also the undo history i want to put inside there so now i have two options there tool options what this is good for is whichever option you select the tool options will adjust according to that so if i do the magic one selection the fuzzy select tool they call it you'll see that has changed to that if i do the text tool you'll see it changes to the text so that's like a nice thing to have there and uh, also now that i've removed that from the left hand side i can adjust this by using these dots here and make it two columns so that looks a lot more like photoshop and a lot more like my tutorials that you'll see so those are some quick changes that you can make and um, there are more changes that we'll do as we go through the tutorial but we can just do them as you use them so right now that's where you want to start and now if you look at my tutorials you'll be doing similar things to how i have done however something remember if you installed gimp the last thing i'd like you to do if possible is if you go to google and then type in let me put you in a, let me show you what i mean so if you go to google new private window and then do gimp photoshop shortcuts i'll put a link to this um in the in the description it's basically a linux uprising article and it gives you Photoshop shortcuts, which you can use within GIMP. What do I mean by shortcuts? So we can actually do CTR and backspace and fill uh, the canvas with a certain color, all the shortcuts that you would normally use in Photoshop, but in GIMP. And the reason I want you to get used to those is because if you land a gig and you want to be able to use Photoshop, but you learned on GIMP, all those things you learned will be transferable to Photoshop. 
just kind of future proofing you or if you decide down the line to do some work with someone you can say you you know how to use photoshop because it's more or less the same uh, tools that we'll be using here apart from the venues and stuff that are different and some of the selection tools so i'll put a link to that description article linux surprising is basically a little file that you save and put into your program settings and it basically gives you a profile of all the shortcuts so that was a quick tutorial of how to set up your gimp menus to allow you to kind of follow me on my journey so i'll see you in the next video